Hello people, Linker here talking about Lovefrick, the new artifact and everything you need to know about this update now that we have all the information. So let's get to it. So in this day and age where campaign feels like an elevator, where individual progress is slowing down, but campaign nerfs are spitting up when you feel like you figured everything out and game players want something new from this update. So. Let's start with the rose of follow button. There it is, not a meta prospect like Love Freak by any means, but the rose of follow button, I think is actually good news. Not because I think it's gonna change the hero, she's gonna do everything the same like she did, but now that the meta replays are solidifying, now that we have the min power, keeping to change both of the game mechanic as an anti-cheat mechanic, I believe this new button today could be a new mode tomorrow. What if they let you target everything you want? What if they mix things up? Well, this is a big investment of dev time, I assume, because they need to add this new thing. I like it. I like how they're taking new approaches. I want them to keep doing this and I want them to be transparent so that we have more data so that we can chime in and this game can keep developing. Especially now that people are saying about Lilith, there's this article I'll link below, but basically they're saying because uh, Lilith and AFK Arena has made enough money, they're not trying to mix things up. And Endgame is feeling like it's becoming a little bit stale. Many players are saying, yo, me as an Endgame player, I want to try new things. I don't want just campaign to move over me as replays get slower and slower and slower and nerfs are getting faster. I want to do new things. So for new things, let's jump right into the update. Like Rosalind might jump walls now with Prince of Persia. First, let's talk about the artifact life's limit. It's a fortitude artifact. Gotta love Lilith mistranslation saying it's for warriors. I actually have a cool video about some other cool mistranslated mechanics that might change your gameplay. I'll link it down below. Anyways, the damage is irrelevant. The haste reduction AOE has a high skill cap, but for now, it's probably outclassed by barricade for most applications. I'm not sure what our age is. I will have to check and get back with you, but some players will probably find interesting usage for this. We'll be able to apply it to large groups, maybe consistently. I'll definitely be waiting to see that. Not a huge new artifact introduction, but something interesting that kind of spices it up for the tanks. And moving forward, we now have Leo Frick. Look at this guy. Isn't he cool? With that little Mastiff and the butler kind of appeal. Not the first butler that I've given and tried to pull off. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so this is a battle, like how can you not like him? The price tag on Iapogen is heavy, so let's see if he can justify that, especially since he's joining the support ranks alongside Aziz, alongside Mortis with the Hypogen group. Some people ask me if they forgot the dog like Alna's wolves. No, they didn't. Uh, it's right here in the ultimate. So let's start talking about what he does, what he is. It has a big health bar, this Mastiff, almost equal to layers and base scaling. It also does a little damage, but most importantly, taunts and reduces attack. This is a slow ability. It's pretty slow, it does eight seconds a taunt is pretty good. The taunt is more straightforward application for campaign because the attack reduction, while that stuff is useful, if you live on that long in campaign, you're still able to kind of pull things forward, you're probably fine. In PvP, if you can slow things down to this level, it might actually be relevant, but uh, I wonder if you could. I wonder if stalling this hard is still going to be in the top set meta. It might be your fifth set right now. I'm not sure this is where we're moving forward. So the ultimate is kind of quirky, kind of interesting. We will experiment with it going forward. He also has these worms. So worms basically uh, like deal damage, steal energy, low recovery. Reminds me of an Odin Nora hybrid kind of slowing down the pace of the fight. Speaking of Odin, got nerfs, but I digress. We can move forward to his CC. So this is the biggest wild card, okay? Timing on this changes or breaks the heat, like big, big stuff. If he is able to just walk up and directly do this, then this might actually find application campaign like directly because the worms, they're a little bit slow. He needs to use them and it's like recovery. So in order to actually get value, it needs to go on for a while. The Mastiff, it relies on dying and proccing effects. This might be instant. This might be the kind of thing where he walks forward, does this right away. And this is able to actually find used campaign usage, but the attack addition would just terrifying enemies for three seconds could be meaningful. So the timing will have to experiment to know if this opens a whole new avenue for Leofric. Perfect disguise. Leofric and the most injured ally become immune to all damage and attacks for five seconds. Five seconds. While the immune, 50% of the damage dealt to the ally is converted in all health, uh, scaling up to basically like the enemy's attack, they heal you, okay? So the healing doesn't really matter. 
okay, where you use immunity, like the big part here is the immunity. I need you people focused. Immunity is huge. And this guy doesn't have it on furniture like Alna where you have to get her ascended. This guy has it right at the bat. Like you get him, like you level him up to like 60 or 80, 80 I think it is. That's it, you have it. He's there, he's like all, all the way, immune, all uh, everything. So if he can time this correctly, this is Alna 2.0, right? Because it goes in any ally you want, basically. Like you time it to be the most injured ally, but it could be basically any ally you want. And that's it, you got it. So while the targeting is less optimal than Alna, it's more like a Silas target where it has to go in the most injured ally. Someday it goes on a Brutus in your shot. This can clutch things in campaign really, really, really well if you time it correctly. So this I think really predicts where he will see use in campaign. Because you're able to get him at E, because you're able to easily pair him with a carry and just try until you get the right tick and then you have an Alna on your side, second Alna. And as we all know, immunity, second Alna, absolutely huge. Does it both for him and the ally. Uh, yeah, so we'll see probably use with stuff like Lucretia, with Aizel, depends on the timing. Moving forward, does have a signature item. Basically, this is haste, has some stats, has something about him doing more damage. If you use him with Lucretia, there's nothing about his damage that matters. Uh, also, furniture, uh, does the Shadow Mastic health regeneration as well as energy reduction. Eventually, spirals to stun. Whales will enjoy this, okay? Whales will love this. Whales will build this guy and will use him also in PvP very prominently. But I predict the main place we'll see use is campaign at low investment. You, you engage like one copy of this guy and then you have him immune. He does everything. He does the whole thing. He gets one ally immune and then he's insane. He doesn't target as well as Alna, so Alna still outclasses. Alna not getting power crept here. An interesting new introduction. So I'm very hopeful about where this is going. I hope it's gonna be as good as we hope. I'm gonna go take care of my cat, but for now, thank you for checking in on me. I hope you're doing wonderful and I've been Linker. Peace.